was elected to the United States Senate in 2010. Ladies and gentlemen, Senator Kelly Ayotte. Live free or die. That's the motto of the great state of New Hampshire. But I believe tonight we all share that view, as have generations of Americans before us. Like most Americans, our life changed after 9-11. My husband, Joe, who was on track to be a commercial pilot, instead served our great country flying combat missions in Iraq. And when Joe returned home from the war, he found himself in the same position as so many Americans. He needed a job. So he started a family business, a landscaping and snow plowing company. And when I say he, I mean we, because I spent many a sleepless night shoveling snow, and I'm proud of the fact then in addition to being a United States Senator, I'm also pretty good with a snowplow. We are no different from most families who take risks starting their own business. We borrowed money to pursue our dreams, and believe me, there was no guarantee of success. We were certainly not too big to fail. We had to make it work. Yet through all the hard work and sacrifice, we pulled together as a family. And as the business grew, so did our extended family. And I speak to you tonight with great concern for our employees, their families, my family and your family. My concern is that President Obama is making it very difficult for small businesses to get started, to create jobs, and to survive. You know what I hear all the time from small business owners that I speak with? They want to focus on their business. The Obama administration wants to bury them with rules, regulations, and red tape. From the National Labor Relations Board to the Department of Labor to the EPA, under this administration, the regulations are up and the job creation is down. President Obama's view is clear. He actually believes that as a small business grows, the federal government should take a larger and larger share of its earnings. That's punishment for expanding and creating more jobs. I call it a success tax. And you know, the very best example is Obamacare. And let me tell you what I hear in the real world about Obamacare. Just a couple of months ago, a successful restaurant owner in Concord, New Hampshire, told me about his dilemma. He wanted to open up a second restaurant and hire more employees. But you know what? He realized that if he did, he would trigger penalties under Obamacare, and he couldn't afford it. So he never opened up that restaurant. Is that what we want for small businesses in America? No. To be afraid to grow because of the government? To face penalties when you create more jobs? To be told you're earning too much? 
Isn't it time that we had a leader who believes that creating jobs ought to be celebrated, not penalized? That is why Mitt Romney is running for president. He'll get the federal government out of the business of small business. He'll fight to lower and simplify taxes. He'll work to eliminate job-killing red tape. And he will roll back Obamacare starting on day one. In both the private sector and as governor of Massachusetts, Mitt Romney always asked, how can I help small businesses grow, innovate, and compete? It's the right question. And it's the question that this administration never thinks to ask. But why should we be surprised? President Obama has never even run a lemonade stand. And you know what? It shows. For the sake of the future of small business, we need to replace Barack Obama with Mitt Romney. We need to replace Barack Obama with Mitt Romney because Mitt truly gets it. Mitt understands the hopes and dreams of small business owners throughout our great country. But don't just take my word for it. I want you to hear from someone who is directly on the front lines of small business. Jack Gilchrist is a small business owner from Hudson, New Hampshire. Three generations of his family have used their own hands to build Gilchrist Metal Fabricating. It's a true family business founded over 30 years ago by Jack's father and carried on by Jack and his son. Jack Gilchrist is the face of small business in America. And yes, he did build it. Please join me in welcoming my friend, Jack Gilchrist. Thank you very much, Senator Ayotte. Boy, am I glad to have you as a champion of small business for New Hampshire. <laughs> Governor Sununum. Like many small businessmen, my dad borrowed against our house to purchase the machinery to start Gilchrist Metal Fabricating. Machines making equipment for drilling oil, generating power, television broadcasting, processing food, and many other industries which touch our lives every day. Machines run by tax-paying Americans like us. We employ about 40 people, most with families, including my son, Stuart. Though we have enjoyed success, we face more global pressure every day. So do our suppliers, so do our customers. If we don't continually streamline our processes to stay efficient, we will lose out to our competition. We don't have a choice. We often make decisions that are difficult. Running a business means taking responsibility, presenting a certain future to the management team, developing a functional budget, ensuring that we have adequate supplies, and making a commitment to fulfill our customers' orders on time. Sure, there are things which I cannot control, 
but running the business is my job and mine alone. I blame no one else for the challenges we face. I am often reminded of something Lee Iacocca said, lead, follow, or get out of the way. Everyone who runs a business understands this, everyone but our federal government. They won't lead, their rules and regulations are too hard to follow, and they won't get out of our way. This administration is killing us out there. Small business needs a leader, a leader who understands the entire spectrum of business and industry, a leader who can work with all parties involved, a leader who will not avoid dealing with difficult issues, a leader with experience to understand what it takes, a leader who is in touch with America's small businesses. Mitt Romney is exactly that leader. Help us elect Mitt Romney for President of the United States. Thank you.